Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for you today. And it's that time again. It's time for a bonus Artifact XP week. Uh, basically, this was to celebrate right before the launch of the DLC, which is coming July 30th. That, that was spoiled by a third-party website. I thought it was actually coming in August, but uh, apparently the DLC now is coming out July 30th is the release date for that. So, leading up to that, from the 23rd to the 29th, we have a bonus Artifact XP. Uh, so everything else is going to, all players will receive double artifact XP when fortifying artifacts. This also means that when you are fortifying artifacts into each other, you don't uh, lose anything. Basically, it's, it's a one-to-one -one transfer uh, because of the double bonus. So that is also handy as well. Uh, so let's kind of skip over. I, I don't want to do a video covering what artifacts to level for each power set because A, they'll just take too long because it's 15 different powers. Uh, and then when you're looking at 50 different powers, then you're looking at uh, on top of that all the support roles for those 15 powers So then you're actually looking at 30 uh, So it's it's that's too much information to cover and I've already done it So I will link in the description and in the comment section my video series that I did on what artifacts to use for which power set It was just a little bit ago. Really. There's no changes since that video uh, Precision now benefits more from the Gnorum uh, than it does from the Venomous Dispenser, but at the same time, if you have a Venomous Dispenser at 200 and your Grimm's at zero, it's not worth a zero to 200 level for the, the Grimm. It's not that much of a difference night and day, but say your Grimm's at 160, it's definitely worth it to get it at 200 if you're Prick. Uh, other than that, the Stratus card received a buff uh, recently, so that uh, artifact now um, is increased in value compared to some of the videos that I, uh, or some of the power sets that I picked there. Uh, besides that, I think the only other changes was Page of Destiny is a bit more uh, convenient to be leveled. Uh, I didn't have it as uh, much as the healer ones. And besides that, I think that's about it. Because the, the new artifacts aren't out yet anyway, so it's, I can't tell you to uh, level the amulet or the uh, or the healer one, the purple healing ray or the lasso of, of truth, because they're not out yet. So unfortunately, we're with the artifacts we have now. So what I did do is if it's worth leveling an artifact to 200. So we'll go over the artifacts that are actually worth leveling to 200, because there's some that definitely aren't. So soul amplifier. Uh, if you're DPS, this is going to be a staple of pretty much nearly every single DPS power set for might. Uh, you've got so you got the Empower Channeling mod, it also doesn't split damage. The final Explosor proc doesn't split damage to 200. That's why it's so powerful for range AoE. So, so on Amplifier is going to be an absolute must if you're Might DPS. Uh, Dead King Scepter is ironic because you don't actually use this, but it, if you're going to, it has to be at 200. So this is one of the things where if you have extra money floating around and you want to kind of experiment with it, it's a, it's a nice artifact, but what you have to use on is uh, switch outs. So basically, if you're going to pop an orbital, switch on Dead King, like open up your inventory, switch your artifact, uh, go to Dead King, because you'll get the increased orbital damage, the cooldown, and you'll also get the orbital assistance proc uh, after the orbital is used, and which is a single target hit based on your might. So that's helpful. But, I mean, once again, you're, you're not using it the full time. So it's not powerful enough to be on your loadout the entire time. Uh, it's only for those niche situations where you switch it in. Uh, Le Legionary Sparing Eye. This is more of a tank artifact, but it used to be a prec artifact just because it's one of the early ones. Definitely not worth 200, even if it's a DPS artifact or a troll or a tank. Sorry, not worth it. Uh, the Grim kind of on the outside. Is it worth 200? No, because the only the only thing you get at 200 is the, is the power reduction and technically 5% might. Uh, so it's helpful at 200, but absolutely not required. Uh, 160 is perfectly fine. But if you're a prec TPS, you want to have it at 200. So that's the only exception of Grim being worth 200 is if you're a prec TPS. Uh, Philosopher's Stone, just the, the double duration of health and, and damage buff. Um, is really what pushes it to 200 but the same thing it's a switch out artifact so it, just like dead king you're only using philosopher's stone if you're going to drop a supply drop because then you get all the benefits from it and switch back so it's not something you'd have on your loadout the entire time so grab the soul cloak is one of the best artifacts as it covers dual roles so anytime you use a supercharge where supercharges if a dps tank troll healer whatever you're always going to be using a supercharge more than likely so scrap the soul cloak is always handy for that some people use it on switch out. Uh, you don't necessarily have to. It's just as good to have it on your bar the entire time because of the increased regeneration that you get as well. All right, the Gemini, same thing. It's a dual roll artifact. Uh, great for damage and support rolls. Definitely, if you're going to have it at 200, definitely want it at 200 because of the extra 5% stats, uh, especially if you're support rolls. DPS is not as powerful. The, the Strategist card kind of ekes out over the Gemini, depending on what power set you are. 
uh, depending on how fast you can earn your supercharges. Uh, so it's it's pretty close. Dread just kind of ekes out above by the Gemini, but the same thing. If you have a Gemini 200, you're just as good because you can use it just as easily in your support role, uh, besides probably Troll. But uh, for healing and tanking, it's very powerful. Tetra and Cog aren't worth 200. Don't level the 200. 160 is fine. Even 120 is fine. Um, obviously, the only difference is just that you gain uh, percentages of might, but at the same time, y y you're getting a marginal increase in might. So, and they're usually control artifacts anyway. Vendor Suspenser, you probably already have a 200 because it was a free artifact or a free upgraded 200 when they changed it. Strategist card, 100%. If you want this artifact, not only do you get buff for might, like when I, when I say buff for might, don't think that it's worse for prec. It's still better than prec for the might. Uh, even with the 10% buff to it, the prec side of the strategist card procs are still better than the might procs. Um, because of all the prec combos being multi-hit. So, uh, once again, but just because the strategist, because the 30% buff, 100% you have to have that 200 if you're going to use it. Um, the Mort card, once again, is one of those niche artifacts. I've played around with it. Um, we're just not at a point where content can justify the Mort because the issue is that after you reach the 35% uh, damage proc on the Mort, it's useless. You have to switch it out. It does nothing after 35%. The reduced cooldown on the finisher, you don't really notice. Neither did the finisher buff, you don't really notice because they were buffed by base damage already so high. Uh, and the other issue with Lamort is if you're running, say, Elite, uh, or any raid in general, if you die before the boss gets to 35%, you just did zero damage. So I always compare this where Lamort procs for 500k damage at the very end of the fight, or I'd have a strategist card and have those procs the entire time throughout the duration of the fight. So it's just something that can be beneficial, I'm waiting for it to be useful, but the, the strategy card is, is something that you'd run more often than the more. Uh, source shard, once again, not necessarily required at 300, or sorry, 200. Uh, the only difference is you get three pets instead of two. Uh, it's more commonly, it's more reliable to run two just because you've got Robot Psychic and Gnorum. Uh, three is mixing like a trinket one each time in that rotation, so you're not always having advantage of it. Or if you're running like say uh, Gnorm and like Crystal or Fury, same thing. But uh, the Source Shard is kind of an, it's a niche artifact. You have to completely change your build around it. So it, it can be viable. 100% Source Shard does do good damage. Uh, it's just something you have to completely change your spec for. And there's raids that uh, don't lend itself well to the Source Shard because of the damage uh, AOE damage to pets. So if your pets continually die, there's obviously no point to Source Shard because you're going to lose all that massive damage. Transformation card, one of those ones that uh, it's kind of an automatic 200. I would level the strategy card at 200 before the transformation. You can get away with the transformation at like at 160, like one, even 120 even. Uh, it's just how much damage reduction there is. But the strategy card is way more important to level first. So because the transformation card, you still get all the crits even at, at 80. Um, and the strategy card is based off those procs. So that's why they go hand in hand. You pretty much need all 99.9% .9 of the time. You always need both at the same time. To be able to justify the, the procs on the strategy card on the crits because nothing really there's not n enough crit percentages on, on a regular rotation without the transformation card but uh, obviously the, the higher you rank it the less damage reduction you take gem of horus once again it's a niche artifact you don't if you want to have it aoe you get it at 200 but there's much better options for prec at the moment for that so that's pretty much the dps side we can jump over to controller uh controller doesn't really have much to grab the soul close that dual roll so that's why it's helpful to 200 because you can use it across multiple rolls. Uh, Claw, 100%. That's an automatic 200. If you want to do any kind of battle or buff trolling, uh, very, very powerful because a lot of might power sets don't use much power on single target because they're using heat vision or finishers now. So it's less power on cost and a prec doesn't use power anyway. So not only to get that 5% to the uh, buff to the group, including support rolls or tank on tox tanks and healers, not only the DPS. Uh, Amulet is also very useful uh, at 200 because of the 50% debuff. So basically they're, they're um, instead of think of it, it's not 50% stronger. Think of it, a regular troll buff is 10% is debuff. Think now it's 15% 15 instead of 10. So that's how you have to look at it there. But also seven targets at once, they're all debuffed. They're the highest debuff value that you can get. So if you're gonna level, if you're gonna level another troll artifact at 200, that's the one. Power set Pyronus is not worth it. 160 is fine. A Megahedron, don't run it regardless. Uh, and Twin Wings of Azar, don't run it regardless. The Bop Up Link, 
it's more of like a niche troll artifact. It can do well when paired with the strategist card, but I mean, it's not worth leveling it because uh, it's, it's more passive power than actually burst power you can get. Uh, I would still run like, you know, so cloak, amulet, power harness nine times out of 10. And if the group can manage it, then you run amulet, uh, parasite and claw or tetra or cog if you want to buff. So onto the healer artifacts, you're gonna see a lot of dual rolls here. So scrap dual roll, Gemini is a dual roll, strategist cards a dual roll, transformation cards a dual roll. Um, so that's why it's handy as a healer to have those at 200 because you can use them for DPS and healing. So you get to save a bit of money. Page of Destiny is the only healer artifact that's worth leveling to 200 because of the uh, group healing goes from um, four to six. Page of Destiny, it can work at 160, it's just, it's ideal at 200. Uh, the new artifact, Purple Healing Ray, will also be worth it at 200, but obviously you can't level that yet because it's not out. And we finish up the tank artifacts, same thing. A couple dual rolls uh, with Gemini. The only automatic tank, if you are a tank this weekend, 100% get your manacles to 200. That's the tank, best tank artifact. It will always be the best tank artifact. Uh, it gives you the greatest survivability. So this artifact should automatically always be at 200, even if you even get one. If you're a tank and only want one artifact at 200, because Gemini you can still use it 160. You don't you don't get the extra 5% stats, but you can still use it. You still get the supercharged regen. Uh, Manacles has to be at 200 for the shield uh, reset. Everyman prototype. This is a newer artifact. Uh, it is useful 200. I've been running at 200. It, it doesn't always see the the issue is that. As a tank, you're probably always going to have Manacles. Well, you're going to have Manacles and Mystic. So really have one other option. A lot of tanks nowadays run Supercharges. I don't like to rely on a Supercharge, so that's why I take the Everyman. But a lot of tanks prefer running like Dash Attack or Perfect Poise. So that's where Gemini comes in handy then. So then you'd have those three. So it all depends on your playstyle. If you don't care about Supercharges and don't want to use them, then don't run Gemini and run Everyman. But if you like having Supercharge and like having that reliability, then run Gemini or you can run both. Other than that, last of the water is more of like a joke artifact. Um, it's more just broken for survival mode if that ever comes back uh, with the self revive for 15 minutes. So it's, it's gonna be sad that people are gonna be loving that to 200 district for SM. For Factor, the health buff just isn't strong enough on the pull anymore. It, it's just not, it's, it used to be really good because this is like one of the first artifacts that was released, um, but now it's not as beneficial compared to the others. Sparing Eye, once again, uh, counter immunity is still kind of broken, so once again, definitely not worth 200. So, double roll artifacts I was talking before, it's just artifacts that, it's the best bang for the buck. Uh, not Don't think of it like the Cog and Tetra, because you're not going to be loving those, those 200 anyway, but when you take a look at these four, it's just the best bang for your buck, because transformation you can use as a healer, you can use as a DPS, technically you can use as a fire tank. Strategist card you can use for every roll, Scrap the Soul Cloak you can use for every roll, Gemini you can use for every roll. So it's just, you get the best bang for your buck loving those to 200 because no matter what power set you switch to, no matter what uh, role you are, you can use those artifacts. So it's just about saving the best money. So I'll link all those videos, take a look at them, go through them. I'm sure I'm still going to get like 50 or 60 comments in, this, in, the, in the description, in the comment section about what artifacts I should level. I'll try to answer as much as I can because I know it's it kind of an important money decision. So if you don't want to watch the videos, put your comment. I will try my best to answer every single comment. Um, but take a look at the videos and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.